Okay, tracheostomy is one of the oldest documented surgical procedures ever performed. I find those kinds of facts interesting. It goes back to ancient Egyptian times. Um, it first appeared in the medical literature of a tracheostomy procedure. It's found in a medical text um, written in 16, 625 BC. During the diphtheria epidemic of 1833, led to the increased use of tracheostomy, so it became more accepted. But there was still a high mortality rate. A further acceptance occurred when, with, during the polio epidemic in the 30s, 1930s. Um, it was a way to properly, they called it toileting, which is what we would refer to as flushing and suctioning. The, um, respiratory system, and it also helped with long-term ventilation uh, support, which mechanical ventilation support, which is one of the reasons people get tracheostomies to this day. So a tracheostomy is something that we use to bypass the upper airway due to an obstruction. Um, it is to allow for removal of endotracheal secretions to permit the long-term use of mechanical ventilation or to prevent aspiration of oral or gastric secretions in an unconscious or paralyzed patient. Um, and it's also used, it can be used to replace an endotracheal tube if somebody's been intubated. And for any time of long term, we can do this instead, and it's a less damaging long term. Complications, um, especially in the early stages when it's first being um, inserted and first it's a surgical procedure is um, blockage so that they require much more frequent suctioning in the beginning. Um, they're going to need humidified air so we always try to put them on that trach collar especially in the early days because what a trach is bypassing the whole sinus system which not only it filters and moisturizes and uh, warms the air for our lungs so if we take that step out, sometimes we even put them on warm. We'll uh, heat the fluid that it's bubbled through to help increase that uh, moisture content for their lungs to make it less damaging. Um, there can be tracheal damage when putting these in. Um, and even over time, the constant rubbing of that tracheostomy tube into their trachea can cause that trachea to thin. So we have to, doctors need to be very mindful of the size that they're inserting into the uh, trachea. Uh, you can get a trachea, uh, a, a tracheal a tracheoesophageal fistula that, uh, meaning just like it sounds, it has rubbed a, a spot through the trachea and through the esophagus. So now there's a fistula formation. Development of um, granulation tissue may need to be surgically removed um, before decannulation can occur. And that um, can be some high risk. The trachea above or right below the uh, where the tracheostomy is inserted can get uh, narrow or sometimes even collapse because it's not doing its job normally as it was because now we have in, we have in inserted a foreign body. Once the tracheostomy tube is removed, the opening may not close on its own, especially depending on some people you'll see them have real healed stomas. Tubes remaining in place for up to 16 weeks or longer at more risk for needing to have that surgically closed. Groups that are at high risk for needing a tracheostomy are children if, um, because of the upper airway obstruction and them just having smaller airways. Smokers. Um, alcoholic abuse can get you at an increased risk for needing a trachea, diabetes, anybody who's immunocompromised, and then um, anybody with a chronic infectious respiratory disease or is at higher risk for needing a tracheostomy. 
So the tracheostomy skills, and I want you to definitely watch the video, is what we're going to focus on this week. But why I have your attention, I wanted to go over some of the causes, some of the other types of ostomies that we can have as nurses, because you will see some of these next semester. Most popular after tracheostomy is probably a colonoscopy. These are usually done to help um, because of some sort of bowel surgery. Sometimes they can be permanent. Sometimes they can be short term. I love the little bitty one on the baby. That child may have been born with an imperforated anus or a short gut syndrome or something that we can't tell so that they have to have a way to evacuate the waste material. So they do it through a stoma. Here's a video I want you to watch on um, colostomy care. I will upload this PowerPoint so you can watch the video separately than from listening to me talk. You also remember that there's urinary diversion and that also creates a stoma. So be prepared for those and how you would treat those differently. You know, those would not be, uh, sometimes they're bagged if it's um, a, if it is an incontinent diversion, it would be have a, a bag to collect the urine. If it's a continent diversion, we can, you cath it just like you would a bladder. Here's another video that I want you guys to watch, and so I'll post this PowerPoint. This is the nursing student I've mentioned to several of you. Um, not ours, but a, a nursing student who has a ostomy. And she is just quite frank and plain about the ostomies and the things that she wishes somebody had told her. Some of the stoma issues you need to be aware about is that they can, the stoma can collapse um, and almost like be telescoping. There can be, um, the, the stoma is whatever they make the stoma, like if it's an intestinal stoma, and they bring it through, and they're turning the inside out so that you're seeing the inside of the mucosa of the intestine, and they put that, secure that down to the skin, that can separate, and that's called a mucocutaneous separation. You can have stonal stenosis, which is it gets too narrow, just like you can have a narrowing anywhere in your bowels. If that spot narrows, then that can cause some more problems. You can have stoma necrosis. Uh, you have to make sure, doctors have to make sure it has really good blood supply. Your stoma should be bright, beefy red, like raw hamburger meat, red. Um, and then they can have a stoma retraction to where it pulls in and pulls the skin kind of in with it, thereby making it harder to access. There are many types of, of stoma colostomy care systems. There is a one-piece system, which is what they show you in the video. Then they have a two-piece uh, system also that the uh, disc goes around the stoma and has a little plastic uh, part and that you can lock the colostomy bag in with it and then twist it and unlock it. Um, ileostomy care is the same. Uh, the stoma is made from the ileum, so of the small intestines, instead of the colonoscopy is usually made with, a, with the inside of the large intestines. Looking forward to seeing how well you guys do with your trach care.